Kagan, what are you scratching your head for? Did you get the COVID on the bald head? Actually, the hair is starting to come back in. Oh. That's what, yeah. Fuzzy wuzzy. Yep. <laughs> so, one, always make sure you have razors if you shave your head. And two, always make sure they're decent razors if you shave your head. Otherwise, you go through them too fast. Hence the not having any more. And that's the hygiene tip from Kagan today. <laughs> to talk about a 14 bolt axle and what you got there Ben? So this is the drive shaft that was attached to the 14 bolt axle that we went and picked up. I may have a few ideas as the one reason why this was considered junk. That right there is it's the U-joint and the axle cap. It was wore almost clean through that sod. Yikes. We call that junk. So when they was that one done that which was bad enough until I seen this one was doing this. And I went, yeah, those ain't no good. So, I took them apart because I wanted to try something. So, the good news is, is the wore out side was the side that was actually in the drive shaft. The side that's not wore out, this side was actually in the yoke of the 14 bolt axle. So, let's go for a walk. It's bright out here. Heat index still over 100. Yeah. Walking is not the favorite activity right now. Especially when you're overweight. You get that sweaty, sticky stuff happening. I don't know what you're talking about overweight. The weight's on me. <laughs> so I have... I'm coming. I have taken the drive shaft loose from the International for the time being. And uh, this right here is the U-joint you pulled out of the uh, 14 bolt. And... You half lied. It's still attached. Well, that right there is a dead fit. And I even took the micrometer and measured the cap size on that one. And I'm now measuring the cap size on this one. And they were the same cap size. And they're the same width. So putting the 14 bolt underneath of this truck is going to be just as easy as hooking our brake line up and positioning the axle to match the drive shaft setup that we have because the U-joint is going to be a direct bolt in. Now I'm going to connect this back up here in a second, that way that we can still move the truck around until we do so, but that right there makes this a lot easier. And I know what you're thinking, i got some haters out there watching right now thinking, you're going to take that axle out of this truck and you're going to put a 14 bolt in it. Well, it's not going to be a two-ton truck anymore, and you know what you got to say? Put a 14 bolt in, it's my truck. <laughs> There's some purists out there that's gonna say, you can't haul grain with it no more. You might be right. We're putting a 14 bolt in it. We don't intend to haul grain with it anymore. I might. No. Maybe a singer with a trailer. With this is us. Maybe. But this is, this is basically gonna be like a ton and a quarter truck when I'm done. It's gonna do the same thing that my pickup truck does. I mean, I don't have my CDLs anyway. So this truck doesn't require a CDL to drive it. Um, We'll I might try and pull a trailer and see if I don't get caught doing that because I might get in trouble because the GVW plus trailer would get me in trouble here in Ohio. But well, good news is I have a CDL. So. Yeah, Adam's got a CDL, so if they try and handcuff me, I just let him drive it. <laughs> so we can get her home. Like, uh, ADD years ago, if that counts. No. So from here, we're going to get the uh, axle in the garage. Yep, and we're going to start cleaning the brackets off of it, and we'll talk a little bit about it once I get up on saw horses and we can take a better look at it. All right, well, let's get it in there. so that way he can talk with his hands and not have to move stuff and talk at the same time. He gets confused easily. Yeah, that he does. I'm a hand talker, right? 
<laughs> so we got it in on the uh, saw horses at the moment. Hey, uh, these guys are working on getting the brake lines off, removing some junk. Ben has some information that he would like to share once we get this thing cleaned up a little bit. So they're going to get the cover off and uh, we got some talking to do. And he just threw his hands up. I don't know if that's a good sign or not. Hey, I'm going to have to get a different tool to finish getting that off there. And is that one of them hammer wrenches? You got to go get a real wrench? or? No, I actually need Kagan's hammer right now. Oh, you need Kagan's hammer wrench. <laughs> it's a multi-tool. Yeah. These brick lines, that will be any good anymore. I just broke that one. Well, you said you weren't going to keep them anyway, right? Just keep working it. <laughs> He's going to try to make some movie magic and make it look all easy like it's going to come off. But Ooh. as real work goes on in this garage. Oh, I love that smell. Got that grease smell. Oh, no. It's that differential oil smell. Come here. Uh, I did eat a gas station hamburger. Holy place. cow. Oh, that smells good. That's a whole lot cleaner than I anticipated it to be. Well, yeah. So. That's a... Uh... What did I do with that tag I had a second ago? I get it. Because that's important to notice. That's a not even dirty oil. I really think that we like jackpot right here. There you go. So, clean, on the underneath of this differential here, we went to look at and that is a Jasper tag. Which tells me this is not the factory axle that was in that truck. This is one that from Jasper rebuild. So, I don't know what the bearings look like. I don't know that we're going to worry about it because I'm sitting here looking at the teeth on the ring gear and I am not concerned at all. Let me get a look down in there. There is a little bit of metal on that, but nothing. Nah, we're good. Uh, you, those are barely broken in. Good deal. Hmm. So other than the fact that it's a scaly, rusty looking thing on the outside, we actually got a really good differential here. I just wonder if this thing's got any kind of limited slip in it or not. And uh, from sight, no, I can't tell. I don't know. I'm not. I'm, this is the first time I've had a 14 bolt apart, which is another interesting thing I want to talk about. Kagan, if you don't mind to get that yellow pan over there. We're going to dump some of this oil out. And so I thought to myself that I want this truck that I'm building to be able to haul and pull and work and do things like I do with my truck. And, uh, and I've, I've used my truck pretty good. So I thought, well, I'll get a 14 bolt because that's what my truck's got. And that is not terrible looking. I told you, it's not bad. Hmm. Easy. <laughs> Those uh, thirty-year-old sawhorses collapse, and there will be, huh? Yeah. Okay, now. Okay, this goes a little bit against what I thought I knew. So, this is supposedly out of a 2005. What I recently was reading was is the 2000 and newer axles. Um, we're actually an 11 and a half inch ring gear. Is there a tape measure over there? But they didn't have the pinion bearing at the end of them like the 10 and a half inch ring gear 14 bolts. Um, the newer 14 bolts, I guess, is not particularly a GM anymore. I think they're like a collaboration between uh, American. Okay, this is this one is a 10 and a half. So this is a 10 and a half, this is not an 11 and a half, but that's kind of depressing in a way because I was kind of hoping it was 11 and a half. So even if it came out of a 2005, it being a Jasper, it's a 10 and a half. So it does have, and if Adam, if you'll look right down in there, if you will see there is a bearing that you can see on this side of that pinion gear. And that is what makes the 10 and a half inch uh, 14 bolt so strong is because they've actually got three bearings on your pinion gear. There's a bearing down here at the yoke. There's a bearing before the gear and a bearing you see there after the gear. 
So it keeps the pinion gear from, um, I want to say flexing away from the gear under, under load because it holds both sides of that gear instead of just one side so you don't get that deflection. So for being a 10 and a half inch gear, it's still pretty strong because of that. Um, I don't know what we're going to end up doing with this truck, but I'm going to work it. And if I scatter this rear end, we'll find something bigger to put under. I mean, that's, that's how we're going to roll here. But uh, I doubt we scatter this 14 bolt. I plan on uh, lopping some of these brackets off here um, because I'm going to reuse the shock, shock brackets. And we'll place them in a different location. And I'm lopping the spring hangers off of it because I don't need these perches anymore uh, because we're going to make our own uh, brackets for the airbags. Uh, so we got some cleaning to do on the axle, and I'm going to put a truss on it. But I just wanted to open it up, investigate. I'm disappointed that it's not an 11 and a half, but knowing that it's a Jasper and the oil looks like it's in really good shape and the ring gear doesn't really show any wear on it, I think this was a good buy for 200 bucks. So Awesome. You guys see this axle again? Do I have brackets knocked off of it? I have nice shiny tubes and maybe even a... Uh, we had a little bit of an interruption pardon the technical difficulties but we had to examine a transaxle on a uh, mower we had some issues so what he was saying is he's going to remove some brackets and next time you see this it'll be hopefully trussed and i don't i don't know that we'll trust it before we put it under the truck because i want to make sure my brackets and everything are right for the suspension once them are there I build the truss around them. That way, the truss doesn't the truss doesn't then affect how we have to design our suspension setup. I would rather design the truss around our suspension than design the suspension around the truss. Does that make any sense? Nope. Fair enough. So, but, but basically, yeah. we're overall happy with the purchase of the 14 bolt, even though it wasn't an 11 and a half inch. It's good. It's good. It's good. We're gonna throw it over there and ride her till she bucks, huh? Fair enough. It, we'll see which one goes first, the transmission, the engine, or the axle. I doubt it's the engine. That thing's a tank. Yeah, but I built it. Well, so fair enough. It might be well, garbage. Hold on. You were most excited about the transmission, so that's going to be first. Yeah, probably. That's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, thanks for watching. Hey, we'll see you next time.